Hey guys, Josh and Lawrence here with a new video series where we take the number one game from last month and tell you in a few points why we think it's so great. So prepare to be indie form as we examine the greatness of Ori and the Blind Forest. Ah yes, Ori's art. It's beautiful, gorgeous, stunning, breathtaking, but we can all see that. What we need to look at is what makes it so great and how that actually contributes to the experience. We're no art experts, but this is what we saw. Ori has a ridiculous amount of layers, more than any onion or ogre. In the background there are not just trees, but layers of trees at different depths. Then you add parallax scrolling to that and the silhouettes of branches and spiders that pop up in the foreground and you have some very serious depth. The effect of all this is a very big and intimidating world. And this is exactly what the developers wanted. Ori is small for a reason. You're meant to feel like a trespasser completely inferior in this dangerous and strange world. The atmosphere is further enhanced by the animations that make all the plants sway in the wind and keep the world constantly alive. The change of colour in new areas is also very effective. The cool purples and blues suit the areas with open skies and few enemies, whilst the dark and murky green of the swamp warns of its danger. Lastly, we wanted to point out how the background is out of focus and that combined with the shadows make this fantastic fogginess. This creates a sense of unknowing, which works off the depth to further add to how vast the forest appears. We've only really touched on it, but Ori's artists have woven together a variety of techniques to craft a big and imposing world. Metroidvanias, a genre typified by their action platforming, backtracking and ability upgrades, are going through a period of renaissance. The new Metroidvania torchbearers fit into two categories. The love letter, like Shovel Knight and Castle in the Darkness, and ones that expand the original idea, such as Guacamelee and Teslagrad. As for Ori, it definitely fits into this latter group. It is very Metroidvania, with its action, platforming, projectile unlock, skill tree and of course backtracking. However, it is equally defined by its inventions, of which the save feature is easily the most noticeable. You have the freedom to save wherever you please, which prevents the game's challenging nature from needlessly punishing the player. You will die frequently, but the ability to place checkpoints where you like means you can quickly retry sections and move on with little fuss. This power can't be abused either, as it requires hard to find energy. Similarly, the quick and agile movement of Ori makes travelling easy and takes the arduousness out of backtracking. This game doesn't hold you back with punishing deaths or grinding gameplay. You can see it in the design of the game world too. All the levels are connected, so you can stumble upon the wrong area and find your own way. You're left alone in this beautiful forest to explore on your own terms and it feels properly organic. Ori doesn't bog you down, it's non-linear, so the choice isn't between right and wrong, but which way forward. And perhaps most amazingly of all, it still feels distinctly like a metroidvania, but also completely new at the same time. Almost exactly how its 2D art appears 3D. Well guys, if you like this new video, let us know so we can continue it in the future. Thanks for watching, my name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh, we'll see you next time here on Indieformer.